Today, this is the sixth episode of the fourth season of the Minecraft World Tour. Here with Doc M. Hey guys, I'm so glad you could make it. Today we're gonna do some fun stuff and have some good stuff to show off. We are here in the Nether, and yeah, I just dragged a cow all the way from the Mushroom Island over here. And I had one lead when I started that. Then one cow suffocated in the wall and I got two leads. Then I had to go back, grab another one and then I had three leads. So the point is, when you pull um, mobs through portals you can duplicate your leads. Um, still in the game, I thought that was fixed. I was a bit surprised when it um, just happened, but yeah, obviously it's still there. Um, I'm using my new mic today to record a World Tour episode for the first time and yeah. Um, so far I'm really happy how the mic works and also about your feedback about the mic. Um, pretty good. So yeah, I've been spending a lot of time, um, yeah, every day about an hour or two since the last episode building and preparing stuff for this one. And yeah, to kick it off, we want to catch us an Elder Guardian and I have uh, basically everything prepared here. Um, I have a tunnel here with the slime blocks and we want to get the Guardian in here and then make him bounce. I think the tunnel or the, I don't know how you, would, the tube here, the bounce tube will look pretty cool. And yeah, I got a name tag here and yeah, we want to name him Hito. I don't know why this name came to my mind when I was thinking about making the Guardian bounce. But I just think it's an appropriate name, right? Hito. Kind of sounds cool. Um, so yeah. Um, Let's get over to the Guardian um, farm or to the <laughs> Guardian farm to the Guardian farm to be in the future. Um, yeah, here. This is uh, in top of the monument, and that is the monument that is. We need to be careful a bit. I have invisibility with me. We sh should jug it. Let me handle these guys in there. Okay. Now take off our shoes. Okay, we should be alright. So you see. Here we got some more I want to show you later, but at least I brought the railway all the way to out here and added some cool stuff in the track so far. Um, whoops, we got mining fatigue. Last time I was saying mining fatigue. I was just... The thing was, before I was um, visiting Strasbourg with my girlfriend, that's in France, and yeah, we were talking French and fatigue. Uh, it's a French word and it means tired or, you know, tiredness, being tired. And yeah, that's where that came from. So if you are in these guardian temples, of course you should work with slime blocks. They should work well. And here we have our elder guardian chilling. And I'd say we name him right away. Hey Hito, come here. Hito. Okay, Hito. Good name. And now we need to push him over a bit and get him into our water draft. Which should be happening. Whoa. Well... The game crashed, I locked back in and I was dead. Killed by Hito with magic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there is Hito. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. Hito, stay cool. Give me my stuff. Okay. It crashed the game when I tried to push him through. Where's my shoes? No. Oh, he's targeting us. Ow! That did hurt. Where's my shoes? Those. No, no, no. He's targeting us again. <gasps> Ooh. Hito, stop it. Okay, do we have some food? Only <laughs> that, that bit of fish. Well, that could have gone smoother, if you ask me. Okay, he so go go through the portal. We keep on pushing him through. Eventually, he must go through. Oop. He must go through eventually, as um, yeah, we keep on pushing him against it. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You know, there's this cooldown of five minutes, and he can't can't get through. So we have to wait that out now, and eventually, <laughs> we'll poke him through. Hopefully, it doesn't crash and act up weirdly again. 
crazy. All right, it worked. Eventually he went through. Okay, okay, I got the mining fatigue. Let's get rid of the water. All right, I need to drink so we can work here. I brought in two glass blocks there, so he's caught. Now let's dig out this portal. We don't need... No, oh, seriously. Stop doing that. Handing these guys is the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> Whoop. Okay. That's good. He's in there now, Hito. We trapped him. Okay. And we can now easily close that off. I think that's a nice, nice effect. Man, okay. What is this guy doing in here? We should try to mm. kill him. Come on, get out of there. All right, here we go. The cow will be in a better spot later on. And yeah, you know, the cow is just, if you come here and want to look at the guy, then you have some milk uh, close by. But we shall see how we do that. Um. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Oh, no. It's gonna be pretty annoying to have him around here, Ito, but... Well, it's not that bad. Let's check out some more stuff I've been doing. Let's check out some more stuff. So, um, of course I've been working on the railway system, as you could see. And also I stumbled across another bug. You can see that here, it's all dug out. Because when I was putting the cow in, um, I don't think, I know if I mentioned that in the beginning of the episode, but the cow kept on dying in there. See, that's the reason. The portals are a bit offset. I just went through and took some damage from the... Oh, wow. He gives us mining fatigue through interdimensional? Well, that's bloody annoying. That would be interesting if he really does it interdimensional. Oh, man. Then I have to move him. Oh, snap. This would be the most annoying thing ever. He <laughs> can't build around here. Alright, it's almost worn off. Now it wore off. Let's see if we get it again. Or if it just was when we were going through the portal and he just caught, it, caught us there. Yeah. Right now we're not getting it. Well, I was waiting, I had a little creeper blast here. But yeah, anyhow, let's look at the new setup I did for the minecart station, which I think is pretty cool. Put that back here. Is that like that? Pretty sure. You nasty guy, stay away. <laughs> Up there. Here's where I get my zombie drops so far. They're collecting around the villages. Alright, so. Let's pick a minecart and ride off and now observe. Ping! We just got hit by night vision and therefore we have a beautiful view of the underwater scenery here. You can see our temple over there, that's the first one, not the one we were just in. The one from last episode where we yeah, got all the building materials from. So it's hollowed out, vast parts of it are hollowed out. The inner um, innards of it basically, but the structure is mostly there, so it looks kind of cool. The nice thing is now the effect kind of wore off just in time. And yeah, we come up here and let's see if that works. Ah, uh, oh well, let's dive after it real quick. Should be here. Okay, then I can show you because yeah, back there nothing super interesting is happening yet. Okay all the way up again okay bunny island here that's kind of a third way through um, and yeah we have to go all the way so far I have it all with this prismarine blocks I don't know if I like it yet but here we can see the tunnel coming up which is pretty neat I always loved monorails you know or this monorail feel it's not really a monorail it's still a normal minecart track but I like this this idea of having something, you know, that is leading far in the distance and you think, oh, what lies beyond that and you want to go explore it. And yeah, here we got a 
kind of have a little transition coming up, you know, just from the underwater tunnel and we come up here and then kind of go high enough um, so mobs won't really hit us when they shoot at us. Some will spawn on here. So far I'm not doing with nothing with the bunnies, they're cute. Wait, I got a lead with me. Maybe we can bring some back with us. Why not? Maybe we can do a little bunny breeding or so. If we catch them now, we have something. It's a nice one. There's a. Let's see, we can bring three with us for now. There's a black and white one over there. No killer carnival off. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and then I plan to have these posts here. This is the design I had in mind for them. Pretty sure um, I will stick with that. I looked at it for quite uh, some time and changed it a few times. But simplicity is key here, but still it gets some structure in there. Sea lantern and so on. But um, it gets a bit tedious to clearing out um, <coughs> the undergrowth. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me very much. It's uh, getting a bit tedious to clearing out the underwater monument, you know. So I hope I'll just, you know, get building on the other one. I need to shred it anyways. And then I'll have enough building blocks. I mean, don't want to waste too much time on it. And I yeah, want to leave it there as a cool ruin. But I guess we leave the bunnies here for now. We don't have to take them back. Um, it's not really needed. And now let's see if we can make this jump over there. Eventually, no. <laughs> Was hoping. All right. So... We know where they are, you know, we don't have to have to bring him over yet and before we know what we're gonna do with him. Uh, the slime blocks are kind of precious. Ah, well, can afford it. Getting slime is not a problem in the spawn. Um, over at the swamp, you get a bunch of slime spawning all the time. So, um, as you learned, when we ride out, we get the night vision effect and it lasts exactly as long as we are underwater. And when we ride back, I thought, you know, it's not really needed. It's only needed for the outbound. So, yeah, let's cruise back. It's not too far of a ride, but it's quite an enjoyable ride. I like how the tunnel feels here. You kind of feel close to the water. And, yeah, I just like the prism blocks and how they go together. Let's, let's ride back and see if the system triggers when we roll over it from this way. But it shouldn't. And that is the key with that system. So, let's see. Nothing happened, and we are back at the start. Let's send the minecart down, and I'd say I change myself over to game mode 3, so I can show you the redstone that is behind this little contraption down there, which I think is pretty neat. So, let's have a closer look here. We're coming in here with the minecart line, and yeah, this of course is the outbound way, and we need to make sure um, to dispense the potion just, you know, a little bit onto us and that in the right moment. So the principle is um, I have an end gate in there that is connected to either of these pressure plates or yeah detector tracks. Um, basically what an end gate does it uh, triggers a signal and in our case the signal that gets triggered is this dispenser when both signals are on. So the idea is we're coming over here rather quickly and yeah if we hit this and that one and both are activated at the same time, we shall see boom, you know. <laughs> here I got a bunch of night vision potions filled up in the system and here we got just simple hoppers leading into it. And yeah, here you can see the setup. So outbound you go from, you pick the signal up here and go forward and we hit this redstone torch and hit this middle wire which is powered and this leads into the dispenser. From the other side um, yeah, here we always also pick the signal, but here we have delay, and this is uh, the maximum delay two repeaters, and then also hidden this. And yet, yeah, this will only go, uh, yeah, turn off if both of these signals are on. So that's an end gate here. This side and this side needs to be on to turn this off, and yeah, that's the whole whole magic we have going here. Um, not too complicated, it's just a timing thing, it's practically end gate, it's not really a full one, but yeah, you get the jazz. And uh, if we come back, what happens now is, as we are really fast with the minecart, the delay um, yeah, takes a while to go through the two repeaters here, 
and we are over this pressure plate here before the delay hits and yeah that just fits perfectly and therefore the thing is not triggered and we only have it outbound so yeah make sure for your outbound line no delay block torch and then a block on top here you know that brings the power over and for the other side two repeaters on max and that should make it possible that you have only a one directional trigger you can use that for other things of course as well for example for an outbound line with a minecart and if you want to switch tracks or so you know could always be useful so um, that's that I think uh, it was a good way to explain it again with the spectator mode be right back I still sometimes catch mining fatigue here I feel when I log in or so sometimes I get it I just drank a bucket of milk to get rid of it and I want to show you more my friends Whoop, uh, it is a day and a half later now or so since I recorded the last footage and I think now I've completed what I wanted to do for this episode so yeah let's get over here to this area so yeah did some terraforming here nothing fancy and well there you go <laughs> a secret area here that I need to dig out more I just you know had it behind here what I want to do it is uh, we want to put our books here which we use to answer questions but yeah let's first trigger that thing here again boom that whole contraption is mushroom based um, this is super awesome um, yeah do you get it how it works on the first glance I mean you cannot take a butt update from a mushroom directly so you have to think about some tricks and I guess this is what we did here so let's do it again we break the mushroom put it back and that opens the door here for us and we can go in and oh there's a creeper oh crap where's my bow let's put it somewhere okay let's get rid of the guy and yeah let's do it again get the mushroom place it back and it closes off the door so yeah obviously you can see we're working with water streams here and we're resetting a system with a water stream here and yeah I say whoop crap <laughs> it's bail a bit it is time to go to F3 mode again because this thing is a bit tricky but it's a super cool way to use a mushroom for yeah secret door triggering and I think that's something quite um, slick and yeah need some explanation alright this setup here uses quite a bunch of game mechanics first of all when we pick this mushroom we update the water stream here and make it so it flows into this hole here as you can see and this is the basic mechanic we have a water stream we need to force into a certain direction and um, yeah then update by picking this mushroom flows down and what happens is it flows down here into this tube which is now still open that's why you can see some light shining out there I will close it off later when I'm completely finished down here and yeah what it basically does it, it triggers uh, this piston here and um, it's a butt piston and if we come around here you can see that here is that piston that gets triggered right in front of us and it has a redstone block on top a uh, slime block and a normal block behind that's a uh, yeah a butt switch and with that said and done um, we basically trigger the whole mechanics here so when water flows down this thing triggers sends a pulse all the way along here and yeah into this setup we have with the pistons here which is used to uh, reset the water <coughs> there's one thing you have to consider if you want to re reset the water there you have to do it in a cascade so first this block then that block and then you retract them cascading uh, otherwise you would update again and this is what we do with the delay here so we make sure to um, retract the pistons in a cascade and the delay between the two pistons here is three ticks and yeah that's the one part of the reset mechanism and um, the other part is here we coming from this redstone block and going into this piston this is a short pulse and this will yeah pull this block here right in front of, of us up and down and this will trigger the reset mechanism and then basically here we just yeah grab the signal 
here this is just to convert a signal to um, a signal I can use this setup here and bring it into a double piston extender which is a super simple setup just a torch here two repeaters on the delay setting um, you can see that works for me here well because you have to have it a bit higher on delay otherwise you will destroy your sand which is lying on top of here two blocks of sand and then falling down and if you now go back to um, game mode zero we can quickly look at the mechanics again this skeleton why, why do I have my bow I put it somewhere because my inventory was full of redstone oh well and also need to get some food real quick but it, it should be good for the explanation here to finish that off at least so um, you see what happens we basically give the water a certain pass if I would block this off now and open it the water would flow out it would take the shortest pass which is one two and then down there but if you block it here and open it there the water obviously will flow this uh, way and this is um, how we use the mechanic here as you can see and the cascading reset as explained and yeah this opens and closes this door and I don't know if you fully understand the principle of the setup here um, I worked on that with Wubi and then later on Cubehams joined as well and um, the guys are still on the server compacting this thing I, I think <laughs> I came with this idea and yeah we were building it up and now they want to make it more compact and maybe we throw out a little tutorial for that soon I need to go back in the team so we can see what the, what the guys are doing but yeah that was the plan it's gonna be my secret room um, I think it's a pretty snug design using the mushroom and something I haven't seen like that before but yeah you never know many things been done in Minecraft that's another thing that has been done now using a mushroom to trigger a secret door via water streams that trigger a piston and um, so yeah hope you enjoyed the episode thanks for watching as usual my friends the next episode soon working on stuff and yeah tutorial for the secret door would make sense as well See you next time, I'm out. Bye!